I've played this deck for over 100 hours, so now I can tell you how to properly run Braves Conjurer Adept. But before I do, don't forget to hit that subscribe button to keep up to date on the latest deck tech. Braids reads, Braids Conjurer Adept. Two, a blue and a blue, so four drop two two. At the beginning of each player's upkeep, that player may put an artifact, creature, or land card from their hand onto the battlefield. An important thing to note here is that my list is far from optimized. It consists of cards that I have pulled or gotten in trade, so there's a few less Eldrazi than you might like. But even with that in mind, the same general concepts apply to almost any build of Braids. The first most important thing is ramp, which may seem counterintuitive given that we cheat stuff in for free, but we don't always get back to our turn with braids still out on our field, hence why ramp can be a very necessary evil. Ramp cards include Mindstone, 2-drop artifact, tap, add 1 colorless, it can also draw you a card. Gilded Lotus, 5-drop, tap, add 3 mana of any one color. Cage Sun, 6-drop artifact, as Cage Sun enters the battlefield, choose a color, we pick blue. Creatures you control of the chosen color get plus 1 plus 1. Whenever a land's ability adds one or more mana of the chosen color to your mana pool, add one additional mana of that color to your mana pool. The next part of this deck is looking out at all of our opponent's cool toys and deciding which ones we're taking. To accomplish this, we run effects like Control Magic, which is a 4-drop enchantment aura, enchant creature, you control enchanted creature. Mind Control, 5-drop enchant creature, you control enchanted creature, which is strictly worse, Control Magic. Kaiga the Tide Star is a 6-drop 5-5 five five flying... Dragon Spirit, when Kaiga the Tide Star dies, gain control of target creature. All these are great examples of how to maintain pressure in a game where everyone gets to play the most powerful cards in their hand for free. In these scenarios, these cards act as pseudo removal since they lose their best cards, but on top of that, we gain some value off of their creatures. One of the mottos of this deck is if you can't steal them, join them. We run a lot of effects in this deck that'll let us copy powerful creatures on the battlefield, whether they're ours or our opponents, like Gigantoplasm. 4-drop, 0-0 shapeshifter, you may have Gigantoplasm enter the battlefield as a copy of any creature on the battlefield, except it gains X. This creature has base power and toughness XX. It's great, because it can copy a creature with a good ability, and we still have the capacity to turn it into a giant beater later in the game. We also run Clone. A 4-drop shapeshifter again, you may have Clone enter the battlefield as a copy of any creature on the battlefield. It's a classic 4-mana copy effect. These are the bread and butter of this package for any Braids deck. Speaking of 4-drop copying effects, we have Rite of Replication, which is a 4-drop sorcery. Create a token that's a copy of target creature. If this spell was kicked, create 5 of those tokens instead. This is like having Magical Christmas Land when you actually get to kick it, but don't be afraid to copy a powerful creature one time if the need arises. Next, we run ways to return powerful creatures our opponents have been playing all game back to their hands. This way, they have to decide on cheating them out again or doing something else to help them stay in the game. Great examples are Boomerang, 2-drop instant, return target permanent to its owner's hand. It's great since it can hit non-creature permanents, so artifacts, enchantments, planeswalkers, heck, even lands are all fair game. Mystic Confluence is a 5-mana instant, you choose 3. You may choose the same mode more than once. Counter target spell unless its controller pays 3, return target creature to its owner's hand, draw a card. Sometimes, Mystic Confluence just returns everyone's creatures back to their hands that they just teetered into play, and that's okay. Sometimes a bounce 3 is all you need to stay ahead. Aetherize is a 4 mana instant return all attacking creatures to their owner's hands. Aetherize is good for when there's two people left in the game. When your opponent goes all in on trying to take you out, you can end a whole game's worth of resources and creatures played in one foul swoop. Next, we come to some of the beaters in this deck, each one serving its own very specific purpose. It the Betrays is a 12 mana 11-11 with Annihilator 2. Whenever this creature attacks, defending player sacrifices two permanents. Whenever an opponent sacrifices a non-creature permanent. Whenever an opponent sacrifices a non-token permanent, put that card onto the battlefield under your control. It the Betrays is an enabler for all the Annihilation that we do run in this deck. Other versions run even more Eldrazi, so they can take advantage of it more, but even just Annihilator 2 can be backbreaking. Kaderic Leviathan is an 8-drop 5-5. Five five. When Kaderic Leviathan comes into play, return all other non-land permanents to their owner's hands. This is like Cyclonic Rift, but bad. Since it hits us, this is best used when we're really behind everyone, but also leads to some funny scenarios like other players having all their most expensive cards in hand and no artifact ramp or braids to get them back into play. Platinum Angel is a 7-drop Flying Angel. You can't lose the game and your opponents can't win the game. This card says we can't lose the game. I don't know what more I really need to tell you. If I'm equipping a card with Swiftfoot Boots, it'll probably be this over Braids any day. Stormtide Leviathan is an 8-drop 8-8 eight eight Leviathan with Island Walk. All lands are islands in addition to their other types. Creatures without flying or Island Walk can't attack. This card is like a blue moat. 
almost no one runs island walk, so that part of the text usually isn't relevant. The flying bit makes it a pain for our opponents, especially if they have a big board of creatures that was just invalidated by one card. Steel Hecate is a 6 mana dragon that's also an artifact. Pay X, destroy each non-land permanent with converted mana cost X, whose controller was dealt combat damage by Steel Hecate this turn. Activate only once each turn. There are other abilities on this card, but that's the one that we're really playing this for. I'm going to be honest, this is here for tokens. And I know it can be great getting rid of all of a player's two mana monorocks, but my favorite is just swinging in and nuking all of someone's tokens. Sphinx of Uthun is a 7-drop 5-6 flying sphinx. When it enters the battlefield, reveal the top five cards of your library. An opponent separates those cards into two piles. Put one pile into your hand and the other into your graveyard. This is a great example of a creature with a strong enters the battlefield ability. There's a different version of this deck where you focus on those and flicker effects, but that isn't this deck deck. Exodron is a five mana, I swear it gets gigantic, creature illusion. As it enters the battlefield, turn all other non-token creatures face down. Its power and toughness are each equal to the number of face down creatures on the battlefield. This card is a pseudo board wipe, ish. If you've never flipped somebody's Elish Norn face down, then you haven't really lived. The icing on the cake, as if invalidating all creatures other players have cheated into play wasn't enough, is it gets huge depending on the number of face down creatures on the board. I also run a small Wizard Matters package. While not necessary, it can be a bit of fun. The package includes Arcanus the Omnipotent, a 6 mana 3 4, with the ability tap draw three cards, which is a creature we can cheat into play that draws us cards. A zombie leader of scrolls is a 5 mana 0 2, tap an untapped wizard you control, draw a card, which is another wizard we can cheat into play that draws us cards. Gilcaster Colossus is a 7 mana 5 6 creature type giant wizard. Tap an untapped wizard you control, return target non-land permanent you don't control to its owner's hand, which can turn braids into a bounce engine, which is very nice. And that's it. That's the deck. Can you think of any sleeper hits that belong in this deck? If so, leave them in the comments below for other people to read. I have a Patreon, so if you feel like you want to support me, you can. But if you can't, a subscribe is great as well. Thank you so much for your time and have a wonderful day.